Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to learn about the prompt templates such as a message, prompt, prompt template, and what are the various types of message types available. And finally, we are going to see how we can write effective prompts. So let's get started. So if you take a look at our uh, earlier example of a simple chart, this is how we used to interact with the LLMs. By simply calling the chart line dot prompt, we are passing the whatever the user prompt value is as a string, and then call the call method, and finally we get the response string by calling the content method. So it is the simplest way of interacting with the LLMs. But here we have not specified how the LLM should behave. So we are relying on the default behavior. We don't know whether it is going to behave like a professional chatbot or it's going to be a rogue behavior. We don't know. But most likely by default, they are going to respond in a professional manner as far as I know. But this is where you can tune your application based on the need of your uh, the system you are going to build. You can define how the LLM should behave. So here, if you take a look at the code we have, so here I specify what is the system prompt. You are a funny and helpful assistant. You always respond in a, a sarcastic manner, something like that. Or you can specify you are a friendly, helpful assistant. You always respond professionally. So it's up to us how we want the LLMs to behave. And then we constructed system message and user message and then create a prompt and then call the LLM. But what are these system messages, user messages? So if you take a look at the uh, prompt, it contains a list of messages. And also we can specify uh, custom chart options, how the generation should work. But why it needs to be a list of messages? Shouldn't a prompt simply a string that we want, what are the thing we want to ask the LLM? But here it is a list of messages because here we are defining various types of messages because when we are interacting with the LLM, what are the question prompt we are asking? That's a user message coming from a user of the system. And LLM may generate a message that can be considered as a uh, assistant message. And also we are specifying the system message to define how the LLM should behave. And also when we ask anything uh, to the LLMs, maybe they make another uh, tool calls or things like that. So there are a different types of messages. So that is why we have a message type that represents what kind of a message we have uh, while exchanging a prompt. So here we have a user type message, assistant, this is like a response coming from the LLMs and system is uh, what the behavior we are setting for the LLM and tool, a message of type function passed as input. So there are different types of uh, messages, mostly these tool, uh, this message we'll get to know more about it while we are talking about the tool calling uh, facility. So right now uh, to understand a system message is to set the uh, expectation of how the LLM should behave. And assistant is nothing but the uh, LLM, LLM response and user is our uh, query. So based on that, uh, we, there is some concrete classes, for example, system message, which is a setting, this is of type uh, system. And again, if you take a look at the user message, it is of type user. So it is setting some uh, base parameters for the uh, message type. So this is how you can define a prompt uh, to let the LLM know how it should behave and you can create a user message by passing the user actual input and then you can construct a prompt by passing the list of all these uh, messages and uh, you can call the prompt by specifying this prompt object and then call the content. You may ask why we have a list of messages. Shouldn't it always be like uh, there can be a system message and a user message? But by default, LLMs don't carry the all the knowledge of the conversation. Every interaction is kind of a treat it as a uh, one uh, first call. So they don't remember the conversation history. So that's what we are going to see in the future videos, how to retain the conversation so that they can respond in a natural conversation style. So for now, think of, you can create a prompt 
taking a, a list of messages and now we can call this so let's see how we can uh, see the difference like okay first let us ask LLM to behave very professionally and then I have a test uh, making the API call and I am asking why Java is so popular in enterprise software development so let me run this test and as we specified it should behave in a professional manner now let's wait for the response okay we got the response so if you take a look at it it's more more like a professional response like java's popularity in enterprise software development is combination of technical practical strategic factors and all that you can see the professional terminology and all that uh, platform independence robust ecosystem so you can see it is more like a professional tone uh, let's change it to uh, a funny and a bit sarcastic manner now let's run the same uh, test again so again we got the response and if we take a look at the response now it is all the thinking part and finally uh, java the language that's been around since 90s like middle-aged uncle who insists on wearing a tie to be a beach party now you see the tone right it is mostly funny and uh, kind of sarcastic but hey who wouldn't want to use it in enterprise software so uh, right ones run anywhere uh, java's jvm magic lets you run code on any platform assuming you have got a jvm installed it's like having a universal uh, remote for your computer etc etc so you see the uh, tone right it is mostly casual and funny because we set it to behave like a funny uh, sarcastic assistant so that's how you can uh, tune how the llm should behave and uh, next thing to understand about the prompting is earlier we have simply take whatever the user is giving and then passing the entire thing as a uh, as a input to the LLMs. But sometimes uh, maybe we have some uh, a templating uh, way of asking the questions, but only certain things change. Uh, let's take an example of let's say I want to give some presentation uh, conference talk or something like that and I have some topic in my mind but I would like to take the help of LLMs to come up with some uh, good uh, title suggestions so here the changing part is what is the topic that I want to give and how many titles I would like to generate for this uh, given topic so this is a, a pretty good scenario for uh, using a prompt template. So uh, here the prompt template, I created an instance of prompt template saying I would like to give a presentation about the following topic and I use this placeholder and give me count suggestion, title suggestions for this topic. Make sure the title is relevant to the topic and it should be a single short sentence. So here only these two things can be changed. Um, and I can pass the var uh, variables uh, to replace what is the topic and what is the count. So here we created a record taking the topic and count and uh, we are passing that and asking it to create a message. So it got a message created and here we are saying uh, prompt and then give the messages and uh, we get the response. So this is how if you have some standard uh, ask for the LLMs but the certain parameters change this is how you can use a prompt templates so let's see what we can ask uh, suggest titles uh, there is another test so here let's say I would like to give some talk about the Spring Boot tips and tricks and I want the LLMs to give me some uh, title sessions let's say I want to have uh, three sessions so here let me run this test so we got the answer here you can see mastering spring boot essential tips and tricks uh, streamline your spring boot projects with these pro tips spring boot mastery tips to boost your development efficiency so uh, yeah uh, kind of a nice so this is uh, another way to use llms to assist you to come up with some sessions and things like that here if you notice we are kind of a hard coding the uh, 
prompts or system uh, template system messages in the code itself but we can also externalize them into some uh, class path resources and we can use them uh, let's say we want to generate some interesting tweets based on the input we give uh, we know what to tweet about but uh, we want to uh, enhance that content uh, based on the llm uh, help so i would like to create a tweet following certain pattern for example here i am creating a system prompt in this external file in the class path saying that you are an expert software developer and experienced content creator your job is to generate interesting tweet based on the given input use a catchy first line to convey the essence of the input keep it concise and engaging maintain a professional tone use bullet points to list key features or benefits uh, use emojis where appropriate use relevant hashtags at the end and we are also saying because most of the times LLMs kind of generate markdown syntax uh, based response. But here for the tweet, we don't want the markdown syntax. So I'm saying use plain text format. So we have this uh, class path resource file here and I have injected that as a resource. So here I use the add value and specify the uh, path and it injected into this resource. Once I have this, here in this uh, generate tweet endpoint, I am um, taking the content of that file and then creating the system message and take what are the input user is giving and asking the LLM to come up with the response. In this case, we are expecting it to generate some interesting tweet for us. And again, uh, let's see, I have a test for uh, it. So here I have a, a test that says about uh, prompt IntelliJ IDEA 2025.2 is released uh, with a lot of new features such as Java 25 early uh, access, Maven 4, J specify for nullability checks, Spring debugger plugin, Spring module is support and check out the blog post link for more details. So essentially this is the gist of what I would like to tweet but I would like to enhance that uh, to be more attractive okay so let me run this and see what kind of a tweet content it is going to generate so let's see the response so here you can see uh, kind of uh, using nice emojis looks a little bit interesting and though i mentioned not to use the markdown syntax it still used uh, markdown uh, bold markers here and also added the link uh, and also build modular microservices effortlessly. So this is the thing we should be careful about. Spring Monolith is not for building microservices. Effectively, it is for building modular monolith. So though it is helping us to generate some interesting content, don't blindly take it and then post it. You should always take this and then tweak it to uh, do the fact check and then correct if it is, uh, makes sense or not. And then you can post it. So you get the point, right? You can generate some content and make sure you validate it and then correct it if it is not really reflecting the correctness. And it is already helping with some nice hashtags. And uh, I would say it is helpful. And this is how you can leverage various uh, prompt uh, techniques by using uh, external files you can define not only for system uh, prompt you can also use it for user messages as well and you can use this prompt template if there is only uh, certain parameters that change and uh, this is how you can specify how the llm you should uh, you should tell llm that this is how you should behave so this is about uh, uh, prompt templates and also if you take a look at the official documentation in prompt section there is a subsection called creating effective prompts uh, this is really important because this is how we essentially interact with the LNMs. so we should know how to effectively write the prompts so here saying that instructions offer clear and direct instructions to the AI so as I mentioned many times in my videos Think of it like a junior developer and the more clear instructions you give, the better uh, the chances that you may get what you are expecting. And also external context. So if you are asking the LLMs to 
do something for you and if it does not have all the context obviously it is not able to generate the more accurate content so for whatever the topic you are asking what are the task you are giving if it needs some external context find a way to pass that external uh, context either embedding that external information as part of the input itself or making tool call apis or things like that user input this is what essentially we ask the rm and finally output indicator so this is a very important point like so far what we have seen we ask LLM some uh, question or uh, task and it returns some textual response. What if we want the response to be in JSON format? What if we are expecting uh, that JSON format should follow certain uh, fields like, okay, title, content, uh, tags or something like that. So that is where you need to specify what is the format you are expecting and inside that JSON, what is the fields you are expecting so you can be more clear about what is the expected response. So by providing all these things, you have a better chance of getting the expected outcome. So this is about prompt templates and I hope you find this useful. So in the next video, we are going to talk about the structured outputs. See you then. Bye bye.